What's up guys, welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake. If you guys were watching in the last video, the Easton Made Splitter was running really slow. Like, double the, uh, the cycle time that it normally takes. Um, after a little bit of investigation and talking with uh, Elliot from Everything Elliot, Scheib from Outside with Scheib, Jeff and Patty from Mountaintop Outdoors, and Harry uh, from over at Easton Made Service Department, we all came to the same conclusion that uh, it seemed like the splitter was running in the second stage of the pump, which is the slower, really powerful stage of that pump, and they all had the same solution. Uh, so we are out here at the Easton Made Splitter, and I want to show you guys what I just found. So at the back of the Easton Made Splitter, there are um, these two pumps. I believe this is a separate pump to power the conveyor and this is the big pump the 2228 uh, pump for you know the actual splitter itself now right in there there's supposed to be a jam nut and a set screw um, and I guess that controls like the actual power that this pump puts out or what stage you know when it kicks into that second stage um, from everything that everybody told me when that screw pops out it is just always in the second stage um, so I guess the more you pull that out the quicker it will uh, you know turn over to that second stage from the fast first stage now I didn't know if I would be able to find these things but I got pretty darn lucky guys if you look right here I found part of a screw now this is the is the bottom of the screw like the very end but if we keep looking I saw it right over here is the part with the Allen key in it and these two pieces happen to match up together like where they where the break was then if you keep looking something shiny over here there's the jam nut so I was lucky enough to find all three pieces to the missing puzzle, and that's why the splitter was running so slow. Now, Scheib said he actually had this issue before. Um, Jeff and Patty had heard of it, and Harry over at Estimate was aware of it as well. So I'm guessing that this, I'm, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this, but I'm guessing that this isn't an Easton made issue um, because I don't think Easton made actually actually makes these pumps. Um, they might have some like proprietary you know parts in there, but I don't think they make the pumps themselves. Um, whether or not they tune the pump to the machine before leaving the Easton made factory, I'm not really sure. Um, but for like three out of four people to have heard about this issue occurring and for Scheib to have actually actually experienced it himself, I'm guessing that this happens to quite a few people. Um, so I just wanted to put this out there and show anybody that might be experiencing a slower than normal splitter. I think mine was the worst case scenario because the screw had completely fallen out. But um, even if you're noticing a couple second difference, uh, just by, by these pieces backing themselves out or potentially backing themselves out, you could be losing uh, you know, productivity out of your machine. Um, no big deal. I'm glad everybody was so helpful and that I was able to actually find, I can't believe, I was able to find all three of these parts. Um, so now I'm going to hop in the truck, head to the hardware store, probably fuel up the Easton Made uh, removable gas tank um, just because we're going out and it's only half full. And then hopefully we will get to some splitting. Okay, guys, back from the hardware store. They didn't have actual like Allen key you know, threaded rod, like set screws, um, but this is the same thread and, uh, you know, length and diameter. Um, so if anybody is wondering what size it is, now I can't speak for all of the machines, but, you know, obviously I have a 2228 with uh, that pump on it, and the set screw that you need for that is an M8 by .125, you know, thread, and you're looking for about an inch of length. So I got two of them because if it happened once, it can happen a second and a third time. Hopefully not, but at least I'll be prepared. I'll just keep the spare in the, you know, little compartment over there. So let's get this puppy on. Okay. Now, before I start anything, I'm going to actually mark with a line just on the top of this screw here. Because... 
they said um, that when you go to install it again, to thread it all the way in and then back it off by two and a half turns. So that way I'll, you know, be able to denote which way I'm turning it and how many turns I'm turning it. So let's put this in. Okay, so that's all the way in, and the line on it is horizontal, so now I'm going to go back. So, it's half a turn. That's one full turn. Almost two full turns. There's two full turns, and now we'll go a half. And there's a half. So now I will tighten down the jam nut. And I don't think it has to be anything crazy, you know, just tight enough. And hopefully that has alleviated our issues. So uh, let's fire up the machine and see what our cycle time looks like. Now, even yesterday when we were running with Chris and his father, you know, even under absolutely no load, the cycle time was rather slow. So uh, let's see if it's improved any. Let it warm up for a second. All right, here we go. Seems to be going much faster now. Ready, set, go. Six point five three, that's pretty good. Let's try it one more time. Ready, set, go. Six point five five. We are uh, under seven seconds. I'd say that's pretty darn good. Okay guys, so I'm super happy with that. We got a full tank of gas, so I'm gonna go grab the tractor up yonder and we got a bunch of really nice ash to split up so here we go thought it might be fun to uh just set up two cameras and let them roll and see how long it takes to fill up a tote off the end of the conveyor loosely you know stacked in um with all of this ash here that we got cut up there's some nice big rounds in there the easter made is back up to working speed and we got an empty tote over there so let's see how we do all right, guys, now one thing I am going to be doing before um, or during the splitting process um, that will slow me down a little bit is that because I'm here by myself, I am going to be going and organizing the wood, albeit I'll do it, you know, quickly. I'm not going to spend an overabundant amount of time and, you know, sit there stacking it like Lincoln Logs, but I do want to make sure that I'm getting a nice full tote because at some point this tote is going to be sold to somebody and it's no fair to them, you know, if I rush this tote. Um, gave them less wood just because I was making a video for you guys. Um, so this is going to be fair. I'm, you know, going to be moving, but I am going to be taking time to organize the tote. So with that being said, uh, I got all three cameras running. We're going to fire up the Estimate and see how we do.
Guys, that set screw must have been working its way out since the day I brought this thing home because, wow, man, did I forget how fast this, <laughs> this machine is. Um, we did that in 14 minutes, 25 seconds, and we got a nice full tote of firewood here. Now, this is a small tote, so it is a little bit under a third of a cord. Um, but you know, I advertise and sell my wood by the basket or by the tote. Small tote, large tote. Small tote is just under a third of a cord. Large tote is about a third of a cord. So yeah, one small tote filled up in 14 minutes and that was with me, you know, obviously running back and forth, manipulating things. Um, I did have to clean out underneath the wedge one time and it looks like I have to now. It kind of you know, picked itself up um, because I was going, you know, fast or faster than I normally would just by myself for timed reasons. Um, I was not manipulating and rolling the logs as often as I normally would um, to account for, you know, little tapers in the cuts on each end and to try and work my way through knots and stuff. Um, so there was a little bit more scrap. You know, you can see like these, these little pieces of stuff, but like this is all ash that's been you know standing dead it, the outside parts of it are a little bit you know punky you can kind of see that um so the outsides are crumbling a little bit on certain pieces but all in all uh i think the estimate is back we got it down to i think it was a six six point four six second cycle time and uh it certainly shows i mean I, this thing was i don't remember this thing being that fast um except for like maybe the first couple days that i had it so that screw must have been working its way out speaking of the screw let's go over here and check to make sure everything is tight it feels hand tight um that line has not moved it was horizontal so i think we are in good shape um, remember that is an m8 by 0.125 uh, thread count and it is one inch in length. So guys that'll wrap this one up um, Hope that gives you an idea of you know, just how easily a, One little screw can affect the entire, you know productivity of a machine and you know to question things when something seems not right um, Granted I think in this scenario because I found that set screw and the nut and everything so easily it definitely happened since I brought the machine back from welder Chris's, you know, making the, the grizzly bars and everything. Um, but I also don't, it probably happened like in the last couple times that I was splitting. Um, Cause the last two times I noticed it was significantly slower. Um, <clears throat> but I, you know, I didn't, it, it, it wasn't like enough for me to think that something was wrong until yesterday when I noticed it was like really wrong. So the screw must have slowly been working its way out. Um, I, I don't think that's any fault of you know Andrew or East, his guys over at Easton made wood splitters um, I think it's probably just like a faulty batch of set screws or something that the pump company must have gotten um, easily fixed no big deal cost me like a dollar and 30 cents or something for the nut and bolt um, so I'm happy you guys will probably see this video Saturday uh, the second day of the Boonville my and Chris's first day at Boonville so if you guys are seeing this and you're heading out to the show later today um, drop a comment down below and if you see us make sure to say hi uh, as always guys if you like the video give it a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already click that subscribe button down below I'd really appreciate it any questions comments or feedback throw it down in that comment section but for now I'm Jake this is Dude Ranch DIY thanks so much for watching we'll see you here next time